to the Horror Room. I'm Travis Bruce. And today we have a special guest, ex-Marine, indie filmmaker, screenwriter, author, a little bit of everything. And he, he has a new short that he's coming out with, directing. It's in pre-production. Teddy, looking forward to that. As well as he has an upcoming novel, The Diary of Kate the Ripper. Eddie, thanks for coming on, my friend. No problem. It's a pleasure to be here. <laughs> awesome. So tell us a little bit about the short that you're working on. It is called Teddy. Yeah. Um, so it's something that I just came up with. Um, somebody just uh, told me, come up with an idea, right? A random idea. And, you know, I'm, I'm a screenwriter, so then I need to come up with a short idea. I didn't know that coming up with uh, short, uh, shorter ideas, shorter screenplays is harder than coming up with, like, feature-length screenplays. Really? Yeah, in my thought, in my thought. Um, so anyway, so somebody challenged me and, and I was like, let me try it. And I was like, it's really hard. But then once I got into it, then it's like, um, so you have to have a beginning, middle and end. So you kind of have to like wrap your mind around, okay, this has to happen like around this page, this has to happen. This. So you, it's like, a it's like a mental game. You have to tell yourself, okay, there has to be, um, there has to be movement in this story. You can't just be flatline, right? Yeah. Uh, you know, it has to be somewhat complex. I try to do, uh, I'll say not reverse, but I try to do a little kind of trick the audience type of, uh, uh, you know, kind of a thing, you know? So mm -hmm. I just have fun with it. That's really just being creative and having fun. Um, and that's you know? Yeah, so. so. So I do have a question. What is the difference? I'm, I don't know either. Yeah. What's the difference between a short um film and a full length like what is the time length in order for it to be considered sort of short and the time length for it to be called a full um feature feature um well I, I work for um film festivals a few of them you know I, I work. so uh, 45 minutes is like uh, anything less than 45 minutes is a short anything over uh, 45 minutes is a feature considered but a feature it, so it's including yeah. credits and everything yeah yeah okay yeah. okay yeah, so that's the difference. Um, you know, you just have to make sure if you're going to, I don't know, I, I, I try not to think about timing, right? If I'm mm -hmm. writing something, I'm just, let me come out with my story. Let me tell my story. Let me involve you with the story and get you in it so you're not worried about, oh, it's 20 minutes or it's 25 minutes. But it is harder to to get programmed into a film festival if you have like a 30-minute film or a 40 minutes, like there's, there's certain uh, times that they're looking for, you know, as well as, oh, is it good, you know, so. Mm -hmm. but. And Teddy is going to be a origin story, story of Ted Bunny, I understand? It, it, kind it, of. it really is something like that. Um, I don't, you know, I don't want his family coming out and suing me. <laughs> uh, <laughs> <laughs> it, it, it's, it's like, uh, so it's kind of like the idea. Um, I just heard that his mother was abusive, right? Mm -hmm. And as we know, he's a crazy guy, serial killer, right? And I, I just, I was like, let me come up with an origin story. You know, let me just come up with my own origin story. You know, let me make it interesting. And um, what I did was, um, so I, I put an abusive mother and I added imaginary friends, right? So it's like multiple personalities. So he has this Ted, Ted, he doesn't like to be called Teddy, um, but his um, basically his father used to call him Teddy, right? And he used to beat him, right? Um, so we find out that he, we'll find out that he killed his dad, right? Um, so he doesn't like to be called Teddy. So from the beginning, that's where the name Teddy came from. Um, so his imaginary friend, Joey, um, kind of like uh, mocks him, makes fun of him, kind of like hits him and stuff like that. So you don't know he's imaginary. You don't know his friend Joey's imaginary. Uh, towards to, towards the end of the movie, you find out. Like I, I make it obvious because <laughs> in writing, like you ever okay? Do you do you write? No. Okay. Well, <laughs> Anybody can write. Just takes practice, right? So basically, when people are reading your stuff, your your script, right? They're gonna be very critical of everything you write. Like oh. I didn't notice that 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 uh, that that he was imaginary, and I'm like, hmm, okay, how do I how do I get past this? Because somebody told me I didn't know he was imaginary, so I was like, you know what, I'm just gonna have the character 
straight up just say, dude, you're a loser. Like, so he, so he, throughout the film, he's making fun of him, right? Mocking him, the imaginary friends mocking uh, Ted, right? Who's kind of a pushover in the beginning. And towards the end, Ted gets pushy back. And then he kind of, he snaps at the end, right? He snaps, right? Because it has to be, this is a short time frame. We're talking 20 pages. So I have to get him t- to be polite, polite, polite. And then kind of towards the end, you know, mm-hmm. kind of push, right? Push back a little bit, but not yet, you know? So then he goes, dude, and the imaginary friend at the end goes, dude, you're a loser. Like, you don't have any friends. I Look, I'm imaginary. So he kind of like says, I'm imaginary. Like, you're a loser. You know, so it kind of comes out like that, like, and he kind of like, kind of like ignores it. He got, he's upset and he runs home, you know, because basically what happens towards the end, he has a decision to make. He wants to escape his mother's home. His mother's abusive, right? Just like his dad was. Mm-hmm. And how does he escape his home? He found a way to get, he, he, um, he cheated him and Joey, uh, his friend, imaginary friend cheated. Uh, they stole like a, like a. They wrote like this essay. They stole an essay from somebody basically, and they they won an, an award and it got him into a boarding school, right? And the funny thing about the the essay that he wrote, actually, you'll find it funny. He's actually he he stole it from a, a, a um, I'll say African American young kid, right? But we don't mm-hmm. we don't get to see all that. But just know that he basically talked about uh, the injustice. Basically, it's like a white guy talking about civil civil rights, like right. injustice, and and then you know you're like this white guy is writing about this. So the security guard, when he goes to the school to like, because he wants to like uh, say, oh, I want to register in the school, so he runs into the security guard, right? And he goes, I, and then he shocks him. He's this big black guy. He goes, I read your essay, man. And he goes, it touched me. <laughs> he goes, <laughs> so, so so we have this white kid kind of like. Kind of like awkwardly, like you know, goes, can, can, can you tell me about it? Just I, I wrote it so long ago, I kind of don't remember, you know. So it's kind of like, you know, he, you know, it. You'll get some like laughs like that, and and when he meets the principal, also um, African American lady, and she goes, oh, I thought you'd be darker. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, because you know, it's like it's like he wrote some kind of. Uh, uh, Martin Luther King's speech and, and that is, is white dude. <laughs> like what? <laughs> How did you write that? But, uh, anyway, um, yeah. so he he so all he has to do basically because he basically his mother tore up his acceptance letter, right? She goes, mm-hmm. "You better not go because I collect, you know, your welfare ain't gonna pay you if you're not here." So she had torn up his uh, his acceptance letters. Without the acceptance letter, he needs a guardian to to approve him going into the school. So the principal, right? Um, I forgot what I refer her to, to us, but she's like the principal, right? She basically said, all I need to do is talk to your guardian. And, you know, he made up this story how his mother was like, first she was sick. And then at the end of the conversation, yeah, I just found out she died. <laughs> she goes, but wait, you, you know, like on the spot, he's like, you know, you know, like he like kind of squirms his way into like, oh, she's actually dead you know so then he goes but my uncle joey he can talk right so so the principal has has the information his old school send the information she told him we have your information uh should we call this number you know um it should be the same number right and he wasn't going to say like no it's not the same number right he don't have any other number so they have to call the house and the mom would pick up right so there's a chance right so then basically he ends up having to debate with Joey. Joey's like, let's kill, let's kill this chick, right? Let's kill her, right? And he's like, no, I would never do that. He goes, we, you know, we've done it before. Why not do it again? He's like, I've never killed anybody. You ever have somebody that like kind of blocks things out? Mm-hmm. So with with Ted, with Ted, he kind of blocks out. There's another personality that he kind of blocks out. Um, I'm trying to think of it. Damn, I can't tell him. I'm missing his name. Uh, I have another. There's another. There's another person out. I'm slipping on the name. Now, anyway, you think, huh? now I have a question. Do you think yeah. with Ed, mm-hmm. do you think the the way he thinks, the way he acts, do you yeah. think is from the mental aspect, or do you think it's also from the trauma? 
from the trauma. N nature versus nurture. I mean, it, it, this is a psychological way to look at it, right? Like, so he was in a, in a really bad environment, right? So it's like his personality's just split. Like, it's like you put so much pressure on something, mm -hmm. it has to break. Unless it's a diamond, it's going to break, right? So that's that's really what I um, I go into. It's just like how he, and we notice in the beginning, like, um, it, I just show, because it's a short movie, so I just, I just show, I don't show the killing. So I wanted to go, like, kind of like Hitchcock type of feel, right? Mm -hmm. um, so I wanted to do, like, the heavy breathing. So the way I would do it on film would be, like, a certain type of breathing, like the sound effects of, and all of a sudden, stop, right? Um, and I kind of want people to assume um, at the end, the way you're going to see him turning into this um, other person, because Joey is like, is an imaginary friend that we see and we think he's real, and then we find out he's not. And Tommy, his name is Tommy. So the se um, the second personality, there's three personalities, you know, Ted, uh, Joey, and Tommy. So the, the third personality funny comes out at the end. So what I have him doing at the end, when Joey's like, come on, let's She's going to come down anytime soon. His mom is upstairs having sex with somebody, and he's scared that she's going to come down and pick up the phone and say, like, he's not going to school. He's not allowed, whatever. Anyway, so he's feeling under pressure because he really wants to escape. Like, she beats him. Like, she beats him. You, you, you know, I'm, I, I'm skipping some details. But she beats okay. him. Yeah, it's really bad. And, like, she beats him, you know, anyway. So, so at the end, I wanted to show kind of like him hyperventilating kind of like, you know, like the same way in the beginning. And then he just like, and he opens his eyes and then he kind of like, he changes his demeanor and he walks and then Joey comes up to him. He's like, yo, t Teddy or blah, blah, blah. Right. He calls him Teddy again. And then, you know, Ted looks at him and he smacks him. So there's like a difference, night and day, and the way he talks, he kind of, he starts squinting, he squints, and, you know, he smacks Joey, and he goes, who the F you calling Teddy? And he goes, and then um, uh, Joey goes, uh, uh, Tommy? He like, you know, like, Tommy? And he backs up. So, you know what I'm saying? So, so yeah. you, we find out, um, I would have to show it mostly on, I would have to show it mostly on camera, like the changes, because in the beginning, you get a, a preview of it, and then you're like, oh, his father's not around, so you assume he killed his dad. Um, towards this, towards the end, he, um, Tommy kind of like puts Joey in his place, and he's like, don't call him Teddy. He doesn't like that, blah, blah, blah. And he kind of like smacks him, and he and Joey backs up, and he disappears. And, you know, um, t uh, Tommy goes, he takes out the, the same knife that we saw in the beginning, so we assume... Something's going to happen. He takes out the knife. He goes upstairs. We hear screaming, right? Screaming. I'm going to, I'm going to, you know, with the noises, I'm going to have to do it. You know, like Alfred Hitchcock did the whole, like when he's stabbing uh, in the um, cycle. So I'm going to have the whole screaming, ah, like you know, da, da, da. Uh, him stabbing. And then I'm going to have the phone ringing, meaning like the principal calling. And that's nice. how it's going to You know, after, after a fade to black. And the phone's gonna be ringing and stuff like that. So, and as a horror fan like you are as well, yeah. have you noticed? But I mean, just even following serial killers, horror, all that good stuff. Yeah. Have you noticed that when it comes to, it seems like, listen, I'm not a psychiatrist or anything. Yeah. <laughs> it, it's it seems like boys, young boys, teenage boys, yeah, they handle trauma when they deal with trauma. Yeah. It goes to violence. Uh, yeah. Goes, sometimes. Yeah. Yeah. That's I mean, right. Yeah, well, it, yeah. it, it's what you know. It's what you know, it, right? Yeah, it goes to violence, and but young girls, yeah, it goes to sexuality. It goes to being a being a stripper, being a porn yeah. star, being promiscuous, yeah. and it, and it just it's interesting because even yeah. if you watch like movies like Alfred yeah. Alfred Hitchcock Psycho, yeah. and um, his mother was very endearing, just like Letterface and so forth, and the yeah. Jason uh, Voorhees, and. Yeah. They, I've seen some overbearing mothers, right? And they almost turn their sons into their husband or their boyfriend. And there's just yeah. like mama boys. Yeah. And then when something happens to that mother, they snap. Yeah, I can see that. I can see that. Psychologically, I can see that. Yeah. Um, 
Yeah. You know, honestly, it's like um, in in uh, in all the Jason movies, right? It's kind of like mother, you know, like, you know. Mom issues. Yeah, mom issues. It's always, but because there always has to be something wrong. You yes. Know? Um, somebody's having sex. That's that's sin, right? There's mm-hmm. premarital, premarital sex. It, it, it just goes back to keeping it simple, right? Mm-hmm. Oh, they're doing something they shouldn't be doing. Now they're going to get it, right? I, I was just saying in a previous interview, I was like, if you look at horror movies, right, especially from in the 90s and above, right? Yeah. And, and it's funny, like the, the the churches, Christians, all that, they hate horror, right? But if you look at horror movies, yeah. they follow Christianity to the T. Yes. Don't do drugs. Don't have sex. Don't be a bad person. Don't be a whore. Don't be yeah. a bully. Don't be, you know, partying. Don't be drinking. Don't be the bad person. Yeah. Quote, unquote. If yeah. you do that, you're going to die. Who survives the... The, the good girl who's a virgin, who doesn't yeah. party, who doesn't drink. Every <laughs> single movie. It, yeah. it, it, it is literally Christianity yeah. thrown at us with violence. And yeah. and like, I don't think most people who are Christians even realize that. Yeah. It, is, it is something that was telling teenagers for a long time, don't, yeah. don't do oh, these things. Right. Don't do these things. Um, I guess you're right. Um, but that's like primitive, very primitive. And people, it appeals to people. Primitive stuff appeals to people. They can say that they don't like it, but they'll watch it. Oh, yeah, right? they do. Yep. You know, it's just hypocritical. Um, so talking about, like, stereotypes and stuff like that, um, you know, so Teddy, right? The reason I'm doing Teddy is because it's going to lead to, like, I'm doing split personalities, you know, multiple personalities, a disorder. I'm, I'm doing, like, a trial run, right? Because mm-hmm. the Dagger Kate the Ripper has multiple personalities. I'm about to bring that up. So, so one person has two personalities, right? Mm-hmm. And they happen to be the descendant of Jack the Ripper, right? Mm-hmm. So it's an interesting way it came about because um, basically the Diary Keith the Ripper is is a made-up story of Jack the Ripper, right? It really? Yeah. So, you know, because so there's like some things behind it that's true, uh, I'm trying to think right now. I can't think off the top of my head. But um, so basically, nobody knows who Jack the Ripper is. There's theories. There was this theory that this guy, um, Holmes, something Holmes, H.H. H. Holmes or something like that, was Jack the Ripper. I think he's from Chicago. And okay. so there was like a there was like a, a time that he kind of like, they didn't know what happened to him, right? Mm-hmm. And, you know, for like two years or something like that, he disappeared. So they think that he went to Europe. You know, to London, yeah. and you know, he killed people. Anyway, it's a descendant of his dad. Was like, yeah, I think my blah 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 was Jack the Ripper. So that's like one of the motivators. And then I was just like, you know what? I just used the name Holmes, right? Mm-hmm. Um, Doctor Holmes, actually. <laughs> uh, <laughs> it's funny, right? Um, I like, I like, I like history, and, and I like being creative with history, right? Mm-hmm. Uh, not that Sherlock Holmes is a real thing, but I, I, I just, I. I'll, I mean, take, yeah, I'll take reality and fictionalize it. That's kind of like what I do. Um, so anyway, with so the Diary Kate the Ripper, I so with Teddy, I was already I already wrote the Diary Kate the Ripper because then I was you know what? Let me direct something that has multiple personalities. Let me see if I can make it interesting, right? Like if I told you about Teddy, you either say, well, it's interesting or it's not interesting, right? Because um, mm-hmm. it's all about the character. It is. In, in writing stories, whether you get into it or not, right? So, anyway, so real quick, so if you if you were to see this uh, this skinny white kid, right, he's like, he steals, right, and he's abused by his mother, you know, he's kind of pushed back, right? Mm-hmm. Like, it's kind of like saying, like, you can identify with being a victim. I think anybody can identify being a victim, like, oh, man, he's really getting abused. We can identify with that, right? Mm-hmm. Um, so then I was like, let me do this story, and then I'm going to direct a bigger story, which is the Diary of Kate the Ripper. Um, so I did the Teddy to lead me into the Diary of Kate the Ripper. Um, you know, um, so anyway, so the Diary of Kate the Ripper, um, this is a script that I turned into a novel. I fictionalized it. I turned it into a novel, right? 
Um, it's basically about a fictional descendant of uh, Jack the Ripper. Um, so Jack the Ripper supposedly, from the way I made it, has a daughter named Catherine, Catherine Holmes. And basically Catherine, um, you know, she's scared of her dad, right? We know very little about her dad. We find out that he's Jack the Ripper and that he, he made a deal with a demon, right? He made a deal with the demon and he kills and he writes the names of the victims in a diary. And that will preserve him. He'll, he'll stay the same and he'll live basically forever, right? So in the beginning, he started killing people. I, uh, he writes the names, right? But his reign, his reign ended really quickly, basically, right? So the demon basically, I'll, I'll cut to the, to the point. The demon basically kind of like uh, when his daughter was knocking on the door, it's time for supper, sir, blah, blah, blah. Basically, the demon's like, kill her, right? Kill her. And Jack is like, like you know, no. I'm not going to kill him. So he chose not to kill his daughter, right? And he's thinking, you know, I just keep going, killing people, and I'll live forever, basically, right? Mm -hmm. But what he didn't know, the demon betrays him. And when he said no to killing his daughter, he possessed his daughter. He transitioned over to her. And she killed him. She killed him and took the diary, right? And then, like, we fast forward to the future and to this, um, this young girl named Mary, right? And we get into Mary. She's like this nice girl, British girl. Ooh. Oh, I, you broke up for a second. <laughs> Can you still yeah. All right. Yep. Um, so basically, he um, we meet this co nice college student. Da da da. Eddie. Or, or uh, yeah, hold on. Huh? Yeah, I'm here. I don't, okay. Yeah, I, I hit it. Yeah. <laughs> All right. So we anyway, we come to the future. We meet Mary. Uh, she's this college student, a journalism student. Um, she's kind of like shy, blah, blah, blah. And so all of a sudden, you know, her head goes down, right? Head goes down. She gets up. She loosens her hair. She takes off her glasses. And this girl starts talking. Um, depending on if it's a book or if it's like the, the script, in the script, basically, she starts talking to the audience. So she's like, she she talks to the audience and she's like, oh, Mary, Mary could talk forever about her drama. Like, you didn't come here to hear about her drama, about blah, 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 right? You know, you came here to hear about me, basically. And, yeah. and Kate, and the name is Kate, she tells, you know, everybody, her name is Kate, blah, blah, blah. And she tells everybody, my, my great, uh, my grandfather is a notorious Jack the Ripper. He made a deal with the demon. You know, blah blah blah. His daughter kills him. So she basically explains everything in a quick nutshell. And while she's explaining, she's like playing around. You know, she picks up an apple. She eats an apple. She spits it up and throws it down. Like she does. Like like she's opposite of Mary, right? Mm -hmm. And and all of a sudden, like uh, then we get introduced to the beginning uh, of basically of the two personalities. You know, and then we go into the normal life of you know Mary. And Mary goes to a therapist um, who will find out. Um, who, she goes to a therapist who we later find out is her mother. Um, oh, wow. Catherine. Catherine. So she's been basically watching over her. She put her in a, in a what do you call it? Uh, like uh, when you put somebody for adoption, basically. In, um, orphanage. Orphanage, basically. But she watched over her. She was her doctor, right? Her, her psychologist, her therapist. <laughs> So she watched it her whole life, basically, right? So she's kind of like a mother figure, but a strict mother figure, right? She kind mm -hmm. of kept her distance. So, she, so they don't find out. Um, the person that finds out actually is um, Catherine Kate, Kate, her daughter Kate. She, her, her personality, she eventually breaks breaks out because Mary gets jumped by a, like a gang leader, like a London uh, gang leader. So she gets mugged. So when 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 uh, when Kate, oh, Mary gets uh, jumped, basically, that kind of like they put her in the hospital, and that kind of unleashes the personality like Kate. So before she wasn't able to come out as much, but they kind of unleashes Kate, right? And Kate was so angry, the demon was able to find its way to to Kate, and like it jumped from like the mother who who was a the therapist, it jumped 
and it found um, Kate. Right the Kate. And kind of went into her because of the anger, right? It, it felt her anger. We find out later on, like, throughout, it, it kind of, like, reveals everything kind of leads to the next point, right? It kind of reveals itself. When, when she gets when she gets mugged, you know, like, the demon's, like, you know, you know, goes into, into Kate because Kate is angry because she's the personality that speaks up for herself, right? Uh, Mary is, like, you know, kind of, like, very shy. She doesn't, she wouldn't get mad about anything, you know? Anyway, um, so it just kind of leads to this whole triangle. Then the cops start investigating because Kate becomes kind of like the demon. Um, she finds the diary. She goes into, she finds the diary in in, doc, in um, her mother's basically office. She takes it. The demon shows Kate where it is, and she takes it, and then she starts killing people in essence, and she kind of like starts um, writing in a diary, and she becomes powerful. Her, like her grandfather. Basically, and um, that's what the mother was trying to like avoid, right? That's why she was always like, "Mary, here's medication," because she didn't want Kate to take over the personality because she was the angry one. So she so sometimes our fate is our fate. <laughs> basically, so she was trying to avoid that. Actually, she was trying to, yeah. you know, uh, the mother was trying to avoid that. And anyway, so it kind of like I'm kind of jumbling it, but uh, <laughs> but basically. <laughs> <laughs> but basically, yeah, go ahead. No, because because um, Jack Ripper, so yeah. he was, I'm trying to think, he was, yeah. was, was he killing women? Women, prostitutes. Prostitutes. Okay, that's what I'm about to say. He was killing yeah. prostitutes. Now, yeah. is Kate doing the same thing, or? He's killing, she's killing, like, um, these guys. One of them is a pimp, right? I, I, I pointed out some average. So the guy, so it's kind of like um, drug lords. That kind of like would control right. like that that um like the women, the prostitutes, like, like the trans basically. Yeah. So this guy controls like the prostitutes in town, right? She so kind of like um one of the, yeah basically it's like the opposite. He she's killing yeah. the 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 evil men instead of like the, the people. Yeah, yeah. The, we we don't feel bad dying. Yeah, yeah, exactly. <laughs> so so she's 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 a bad guy, but she's not a bad guy. Does mm -hmm. that make sense? Yeah. So my, the point that I was going to bring up was that, okay, so any Jack, watch any Jack the Ripper movie, right? Mm -hmm. uh, I know somebody that just did a Jack the Ripper movie, and I was, I worked with him on a few projects, like I, you know, I funded, uh, I, you know, I, I invested in some of his projects, but I didn't invest in that one because it was kind of too close to home. But even, even that one, it wouldn't be the same as mine. So I don't really mind. So, okay. So if you look at any, look up Jack the Ripper, any project that you see, it's going to be very serious, mm -hmm. very serious, right? There's going to be killing, obviously, slasher, right? So what I wanted to do, I, I wanted to do like the opposite of it, right? Um, I, I, I follow kind of like Wes Craven, um, Alfred Hitchcock, right? Yeah. Um, you know, like if you look at the screen movies, it's, 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 it's more slasher than, because they show killing right mm -hmm. but it's a, you know it's a little it's a little darker than that right yeah. like i show her like chopping the fingers off like you know like messing with them like you know like so i showed, I showed her, huh? a little bit of torture yeah a little bit of torture she kind of enjoys it right so so kate is kind of like she doesn't mind doing things herself like kind of like torturing these people right because she's getting revenge for what they did to marry so everything is basically due to something else. Like, you know, everything is, it's like a, the effect, the domino effect, right? Everything's caused by, but you don't know it in the beginning. You don't know that, like, that that's their mother. Kate, Kate finds out that that's their mother, right? But Mary is just, in, she's another consciousness, right? She doesn't know. She doesn't find out till the end. So the audience knows, like, almost in the beginning, because because um, Kate finds the diary, out of the diary, um, a birth certificate calls, uh, falls out. It says uh, Mary Holmes, right? So mm -hmm. it has her, and I'm like, oh, so she finds out, oh, so somebody's been keeping a secret. So she's like, she's she's our mother, basically, right? And she's been hiding it all this time. But she doesn't, because she's a different personality, she doesn't tell Mary. Nope, Mary doesn't find out till the end. When mm -hmm. when the doctor, you know, you know, explains, like, I'm your mother. She goes, What? Like, you know, so, yeah. so like there's different layers to the movie and when she's killing them, 
she she mess she messes with them like you know she'll do stuff with them like there's a scene that she kills somebody um so this guy he leaves the bar right so he's one of the people there's like five people that that kind of like um assaulted her kind of i didn't want to go into the whole rape thing because then i'll get critics saying well you know like rape is another <laughs> level then you know she has to recover it, i didn't want to go there psychologically right so what i did was like you know what okay she she scratches the um o'connor his name is o'connor she scratches him right and he's like he stops smiling and then he's like she knocks her out basically right and then one of the guys like oh i thought we were gonna have fun with this one he's like and he's pissed off because she she scratched him like you know what i'm saying because she basically she freaked out because they're gonna they're gonna try to hurt her right she freaks out and she mary is scared and she scratches him and anyway so he's like yeah, no, it's not gonna happen. So they just basically beat her up really bad. They almost they left her for dead. Um. Anyway, so basically, um, God, I, I kind of lost track of my uh my really. So I have a question for. for, for you. Um, so, but anyway, but it's not serious. Like I was saying, uh, the whole Jack the Ripper thing. Um, she's not serious. Um, the the script, the movies, she's gonna be like, she'll she'll be into like killer mode. But then when she, when the demon, she gets out of the demon mentality, right? Like, because if the demon takes over and she kind of starts killing, but then she learns how to control the demon and we get to see a lot of her personality. Um, oh, so what, what I was telling you about the guy. So there's this guy, um, he takes out, when he leaves the bar, he says goodbye to somebody, right? So he parts ways. And then when the other guy leaves, he, he takes out a bottle of Purell and he cleans his hands because he's like a germ folk, right? So he leaves, he walks, and Kate follows him, right? So when she kills him at the end, she takes out his bottle of Purell, cleans her hands, and um, she puts it down, right? She puts the bottle of Purell down on chest. She had killed him, she cut him up, basically, right? She leaves. A few seconds later, she comes back and grabs the bottle of Purell and runs away. <laughs> <laughs> like, you know, like that kind of thing. So I mean, but we've seen so many different renditions of the Jack the yeah. Ripper story, Jack and to have a where it's a demon possession is yes. something new. Is, is something that's creative. Now, yeah. Yeah. now, Eddie, this is your first novel. Yeah. What are some challenges that you have ran into? Um. Your first novel out there. It's different because I'm a screenwriter. Uh, first, mm -hmm. it's so different. Um, it's so different. It's like night and day. So it's kind of like getting acclimated uh, to writing a novel um, because, yeah, you know, you read novels, right? And I mostly like listen to Audible now, like, you know, I'm like, I'm so busy. Mm -hmm. um, so, but still, like, it's hard for me to get the flow of, of writing more details. I'm used to getting to the point. She does this. Um, but what I had to learn was, okay, you have to kind of branch out. You know, when you're writing a novel, you have to branch out more and go more into the story, deeper into the story. Um, so that's kind of like what I'm learning now, basically. That's why I, I, you know, I hired an editor to kind of like give me feedback on my writing and like, OK, um, how does it look? And, you know, like, um, how can I branch out and explore the story more? Like, what would you want to, you know what I'm saying? I have to like really like a little kid explain to me because that's just me, though. I'm like a little kid. You have to explain to me. OK, so. So am I getting to the point too quick? What would you want me to expand on? Like, you know, I need notes. You know? Because even like with a book, like you have to almost even describe the smell of the room. And like, there's a lot that mm -hmm. I'm with a screenplay. You can just get to the nuts and bolts. <coughs> and like, you almost have to build a visual yes. for the audience when it comes to a book. Yes. So, so I think... And I've read books and, you know, and they basically, yeah, they go into details, but sometimes I'm like, they don't go into that much details. Like, you know, <laughs> yeah, some do, some do, some don't, right? Some uh -huh. do, some don't. Like, I love it. Like, you're like, oh, it smelled like this, this, and that. Yeah. Some mm -hmm. people, oh, the room was this way. Um, yeah. I, I think, I think I need, uh, for me, because I'm stubborn in, in the sense that, like, um, I struggle with simple, simple things. Like very simple things, I struggle with them really bad. Um, but I'm good in school. Like you know, I graduated with like a near 
4.0 from from college, right? Mm -hmm. So so I struggle with simple things like I have to ex I have somebody explain to me, okay, so an essay, right? How do you write an essay? So I had to have somebody explain to me how do you write an essay when I first started college, and then after that I was like, oh, okay, I get it, and then I wrote nearly perfect essays because I'm good at writing, you know, it's like my talent. Um, See, so with me, I need like I need detail. Like when somebody yeah. tells me. Something is X, Y, Z. Okay. Yeah. Well, what color is it? Where exactly is it on the top shelf, middle shelf, bottom shelf? Like yeah. I, I am a person that detail is important. So wow. like, so wow. even like like when I relay something something back to someone, it's very yeah. descriptive. I'm very detailed. Uh, see, but you you're like the opposite of me. Like I have to be told, okay, Eddie, you need to explain this in this way. I'm like, oh, because it's not about a matter of can you write it? It's a matter, do you know what to write? Like, okay, mm -hmm. oh, you want more details? Okay, I'm gonna give you more detail, Travis. Like, you know what I'm saying? I have to be told literally what to do. And that's like my my issue with writing a book. It's just that my, my personal issues, like, you know, like I suffer from PTSD, like, you know, like I have I have certain things that I just don't quite understand it. And, and, and I have to be told, like you, you're like, write all the details. So I mean, it's just like, yeah. Oh, you want me to write the detail? Once you tell me, <laughs> okay. Oh, yeah. and, and that annoys the average person because yeah. I feel like the average person is more like you. You know, yeah. they don't need all the detail. I'm yeah. a person like I need details. Like even if you tell me a story, yeah. I'm asking you details. Well, what was the person wearing? What time of yeah. day was it? Yeah, I'm, yeah, that's pretty good. That's story. pretty good. You're a good person to have around. Like, yes. Need, <laughs> what was she wearing? Now. <laughs> In screenwriting, you mm -hmm. only say it if it's relevant to the story, because you have to paint the picture visually. So, mm -hmm. is it relevant what she's wearing? Like, you know, if it's relevant, then okay, she was wearing like you know, tore up uh, like a skirt or you know something like that. Yeah. You know, like whatever she's wearing because she's a prostitute or or she's yeah. high or th there has to be a reason for or she has uh, track marks on her arm. Mm -hmm. You know, there has to be a the what? Yeah. So that was definitely important. All right, Eddie, you, you, you're on a horror channel. So this is the yes. fun part of the interview. I'm going to ask right. you two horror questions, man. Yeah. All right. Are you ready? Go. <laughs> All right. F. Mary Kill. I, I don't know if you know what that means. You got to F. Mary Kill. F. All right. Are you ready? Oh my God. I have no idea. We're going to do that. <laughs> Iconic horror movie Final Girls. So we're going to have Nev Campbell from Scream, Scream from yeah. Sydney. We're going to have Sydney, yeah. let's see, let's do Ripley, Sigourney Reaver from Aliens. Okay. Oh, so long ago. Oh my God, <laughs> killing me. <laughs> or we're going to have uh, let's go with let's go with Jamie Lee Curtis Halloween. Okay. So you got to marry one, you got to kill one, and you got to F one. Okay. There you go. So I got to marry one. I uh -huh. would marry uh, Jamie Lee Curtis. Actually, no, Neff Campbell from Sydney from uh, the Scream. Scream movie, sorry. <laughs> uh, I, I would kill. Um, oh God. Um, oh, Halloween. Halloween. Uh, you said her name. Oh my God, I have like the worst memory. Um, <laughs> Jamie Lee Curtis, I would kill her because she, she's hard to kill. She came back. You see how she got killed and she came back. <laughs> I'm not even going to get into one of those movies, Halloween Ends. Uh, it was horrible. It was horrible. It, it was just, horrible. It was, it was the worst movie yeah. ever. Why don't did they do that? that? <laughs> don't, don't get me into that. Don't get me into that and the Keyman <laughs> remake. Don't get me into those movies. I would go on a rant for hours. So, I those so, Mary, so I married, I killed... I killed, so I married. Uh, so I killed Jimmy Lee Curtis. I married Sydney from Scream. What was that, the third? I'm Sigourney Reaver from Aliens. Or Ripley. Well, no, I'm saying what's the third option? What was the third option for Sigourney? No, Reaver? it was Sigourney Reaver. She no, played she is. a Ripley in Aliens. Oh, well, what would I do with her? Like kill? No, um, no. Yeah, I mean, so I'm assuming you're. Hold on. You're gonna marry Sydney, right? Yes. Yes. You kill Lori, which means you're going to F Sigourney. Uh, right? That's what I'm saying. Oh, uh, yeah, she's hot. She's hot. 
I mean, that's a good, I mean, that's a good, yeah, I would yeah. go with that. I would, I would go with that. Okay. Yeah, these women are pretty hot. <laughs> <laughs> All right, final question. Yeah. And this is, and this might get you some shit. What is one horror movie that is that people say they love? That's the greatest horror movie ever. But you're like this, you you think is overrated? Um, shoot. I guess I guess we're talking new ones. Halloween, I guess Halloween because because Halloween just went to shit. Excuse my language, but how because of the direction? Um, yeah, Halloween because it's the direction that it took. It went to shit. It was really good, but then it just went to shit. <laughs> because with that trilogy, okay, now see now you got me on, on that topic. Yeah. That trilogy. Yeah. So I'm a huge Halloween fan, right? Yeah. yeah. And um, my second favorite, probably, um, um horror genre behind Nightmare yeah. History, and um, that trilogy was something brand new and fresh. I mean, with the 2018 and Halloween Kills, it was something fresh and new. It was. And then like. To end it the way they fucking ended it, it was just yeah. like, yeah. it was like kicking the nuts. Yeah. It was like, like, oh really? Oh, oh my god, it was the worst. It was, it was the guy, the guy was, saying, "Who's the guy from uh, from Breakfast Club?" The guy from Breakfast Club. It ends tonight. Oh, it ends tonight. Blah blah blah. Oh, uh, uh, what's his name? Oh. Uh, you know from 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 Breakfast Club. You know who I'm talking about? Yeah. Um, I know his name too. I actually seen him at. I actually met him at one of the conventions. Um, Michael Michael Ian Thomas. Michael Ian yeah. Thomas. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Even Halloween Kills. I liked Halloween Kills, the second one, but that okay. third one. It was hard to watch. <laughs> it was hard to watch. I mean, because it was. like. It was. You you gonna have Michael Myers in in the movie for ten minutes? Yeah. 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 He was, yeah. He was purely in and out. Yeah. It was. It wasn't good. It was just stupid. There's this so and and you introduce uh, a whole new character at the end, like yeah. This is the last movie of the trilogy, and you had to introduce a whole brand new character. It made absolutely no fucking sense. No. Yeah. Fucking. No. No. I. So that's why. That's why I really. I. I really. It is overrated now. Uh, yeah. Because of what happened to it. Uh. It's just the whole. It just. It just. It, it started like falling apart. It just didn't make sense. Listen. You know. Uh, I'm a Michael Myers Halloween fan. Please do not make any more Halloween movies. Just let it yeah. be dead. Just let the Halloween series be dead. Unless they're gonna re revamp it, revamp it. No, no, just like um, what was it? Um, what is it? Uh, this, this uh, Leatherface. Be... Leatherface. Uh. Oh, that's a, that's a piece of crap. I, I, I mean, they they they, they kind of, but they could. They have to remake it. They have to remake. It. I think I want to see them remake it. Before. But this would be the fourth time they, they've done it because so it was yeah. the original series and then Rob yeah. Zombie had his take and yeah. then uh, David Gordon Green had his take. I mean, just let it be done. It's it's done. Now <laughs> I see that yeah. now, I see that you're wearing a New York Yankees cap. I'm a Yankees fan. Yeah, yeah. What the fuck is going on with the Yankees? This <laughs> Listen, you ever you ever heard of a poser? Yes. That's me. I'm a poser. I don't. I don't watch my my. Um, no, I'll say this because my my uncle uh, played baseball, mm -hmm. and so I just and I get too many references to Alex Rodriguez, so I don't okay. really I don't really watch baseball. That, that's true. <laughs> the only thing I get is like you look like Alex Rodriguez, so I I really I don't watch the Yankees. You know, that's mm -hmm. my secret. <laughs> I live in Baltimore, and uh, Baltimore's aren't great, and they're rivals or the same oh, division. Yeah. And, and we're in last place. So I've been very quiet about baseball this, this season. So anybody who <laughs> I love baseball, and yeah. I have said shit about baseball all season because my team is stinking and up. In the eighties, in the eighties, I like baseball. Eighties and nineties, I collected cards. Nineties oh, was like well, yeah, I I grew up in the eighties. Yeah. Eighties uh, and nineties was definitely the the best era of baseball. Yeah. I just I mean, this is some of the love most it. iconic players. Conseco, Sammy Sosa, like you know. Oh, Ripken, Frank Thomas. Yeah. Ken oh Griffin. my God! Yeah, yeah, yeah. Those were the best. Those are the oh. best. But you had so many. Um, you had so many good. Um, so many good players that you were just like excited about it. Every but every and every team had stacked lineups with great players. So like yeah. it wasn't just one team that had all the great or, or like a handful of teams with all the great players. Oh, it was it was great. Every team had their own. Two or three superstars in their rivalry, it had like that rivalry, yeah. like you know, 
It was fun. Remember the the, the subway like between the Mets and the Yankees. Sure. Yeah. But that's yeah. still a thing. I mean, that's still a thing. But like, no, no, I know, I know. But I'm saying it was. It, I felt stuff. like more competitive. <laughs> yeah, it's both. So like, it's like. Yeah. <laughs> All right. Yeah, so. <laughs> All right. Uh, well, how can everyone find you? Uh, well, LinkedIn, Eddie Sanchez. Um, I'm everywhere. Es One Films. Anybody could find me on Es One Films. Um, they can't spell that. Just find me on LinkedIn, Eddie Sanchez, producer. Uh, uh one thing I'll say about me. Look, if somebody's gonna say hi to me, they can say hi to me. But ask the question. Don't like try to have a conversation with somebody you don't know. Like if you just started <laughs> talking to me, like. So how are you doing, Eddie? That's kind of awkward, right? Like for me, right? What, Eddie, I know how, how are you doing, Eddie? So how are you doing? Like if if you get straight to the point, like you see how I talk to you, you got straight to the point. Uh, then I would talk to you. But if you're like being on the much, I'm like, ah, you know, I'm not really, you know, like I'm not, I'm not the guy. So I was just like, why are you asking straight, me? Hey, hi. <laughs> right? Yeah. Hey, hi, Eddie. You went to the point, right? Um, I was like, so, hey. I'm trying to live a lot. <laughs> yeah, right? And then I saw I saw what you did. I was like, oh, cool. But if you start talking to me, hey, so how are you doing, Eddie? You, you want to hang out? Or I'm like, no. <laughs> I can't get your number. <laughs> yeah, right? Right? It's kind of like, right? But uh -huh. am I wrong? Do you imagine, hey, Travis, yeah, you want to write. <laughs> Travis, how are you doing? How's your day going? I want to answer you. I want to answer you. I would think you're a fucking weirdo. Right? <laughs> I, I mean, I, I'm saying that because I get that all the time. Like, when people, like say something to me or give me fifteen million, uh, fifteen million dollars or something. People are asking yeah. for money, so I'm just like, it doesn't work that way. I just meet people like, oh, oh, I love your project. I'm just gonna give you money. So I, I get offers, weird offers like that too. Hey, do you want to do 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 videos on my on my channel that I do you never heard of in your life? <laughs> but uh but yeah so but yeah so you can find me very easily i'm eddie sanchez producer you can find me online <laughs> eddie it was an absolute pleasure my friend pleasure man everybody definitely check him out um uh, we got a short teddy coming out soon look out for that as well as the diary of kate the ripper please check yeah. that out in the near yep. future 2024 <laughs> next year yeah 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 so all right my friend all right. Well, thank you once again, brother. Of course. You have a good one, okay? Everyone, thank you for coming to the Horror Room. I'm Travis Bruce. I'm going to see you guys next time.